<laughs> the dynamic that you had to me, I was a senior, you were a sophomore. I had that dynamic with a good buddy of ours, of ours when I was a sophomore and mm-hmm. he's a senior, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And he showed me, uh, we were, we were in band and he's like, we got, yeah, I'm going to show you something super cool. And, uh, we snuck out into the hall and I do not do this. Do not do this. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. Breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. I don't know the rest of the words. Me either. I thought that was all the words there were to that song. Everybody knows what that is. We're talking about breaking <laughs> rules today. All right, not breaking the law. Not we're the not law. admitting guilt to any unlawful doings. No, okay. not admitting anything. All right, uh, not that I've done anything unlawful, but... Uh, don't look at me like that. She just looked at me. Look, look away. <laughs> uh, first of all, before we get started, I want to say something. Yeah. To everybody. So uh, there's an empty seat right here in the middle of the couch. I know. So this to be is filled on, with somebody's butt. This is my fault. So let me let me. <laughs> we are hope we want to tango in on this one, not this topic, but we want to tango in for this podcast. Yeah. Um, and it was supposed to be this next release, but it's not happening, and it's my fault. Uh, the reason hashtag blame skiz. Yeah, hashtag blame skiz. Um, <laughs> so first of all, just so we're totally clear, Tango's into it. He wants to join us, yeah. and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. However, I got a lot of my travel dates mixed up. I was off by a week. Uh, so next thing I know, we're actually not even recording on our normal day because right. I'm going to be in California yeah. when we usually record. So in any case, the bottom line is this. There's going to be a little bit of a gap here. Uh, not in podcast, but in regards to the arrival of Tango. Tango. Yeah, he'll make it when he can make it. You know, uh, the new scheduled date isn't even confirmed just yet. So right. we'll, we'll see. But it is on the docket. We'll get him in. And uh, yeah, this is uh, if, if this podcast feels off at all, it's because it's not a Saturday morning. Yeah, it's a Tuesday morning. Tu- it's a Tuesday almost. afternoon ish. Yeah, like I'm literally like my laptop's over there. I'm keeping an eye on it. You guys, you guys don't need me. Yeah, right? don't be watching for not, email during the podcast. I'm not man. trying to. It's like forever away. I don't want to read it anyways. Um, I'm supposed to be here today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's. I mean, hey, that's actually kind of breaking breaking some rules, right? I mean, it's it's not. Yeah. I can't imagine it would be super welcome that. Uh, I'm recording this podcast at this time. You are I, breaking the rules. I'm breaking You're some supposed rules right to be at work right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I work from home anyways. You're so and fired, dude. I know. Just don't say that. <laughs> uh, I work from home. You know that. And and I, you also, as you were setting everything up, you heard me over there just busting and just getting after stuff mm-hmm. and getting, I went through a couple of meetings and. I thought you were going to bust your keyboard. Like I, you, are, you are the heaviest typer I've I do. ever known. I got Shrek fingers <laughs> and I type very loud. And, and uh, I do. Do you go through like a laptop a month? Like, <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> well, I you have to understand. Well, I also type really fast, and and uh, and usually when I'm typing and it's work related, I'm a little pissed off. And there's <laughs> anger. There's anger in those keystrokes. I don't have time. I just I type fast. Uh, all right, let's get back to it. So I want to talk about breaking rules, and okay. um, this is something. This is a topic I find interesting because in regards to following rules. Uh, when I was younger, I, I was kind of a rule follower when I was very young. And then somewhere in high school, I just sort of started to learn, like, I don't think I'm really into this anymore. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and I know it sounds weird. I'm not encouraging people to break rules. I'm not encouraging. What I am saying is that n- just because a rule is in place doesn't automatically mean that it is the right thing. Yeah, there are such things as, as bad rules. Stupid rules. Like stupid there rules. There are. Yeah. And, and now, now when I was really young, um, this is the first time I broke some rules and I got busted for it. Uh I was real. I was in like first grade, and it was. I, I don't know if we've talked about this, but it was. Uh, I had a math sheet to do, right? And it was one of those things where it was like a hundred different math problems on the sheet, and I do them all, and I turn it in, and I get my grade, and it's like a hundred, whatever. I was I was good at math, and it wasn't. Much brag about it. It wasn't. It wasn't complicated. I wasn't doing calculus. <laughs> it was first grade math. You know what I mean? I mean, who's not based yeah. on that? So I was. I do my thing, and uh, then after a while, I was like, "This is like I don't want to do this." We would learn a new skill set. We get a new math sheet. Out of a hundred of them, I do like eight of them. Right. And I turn it in. Mm-hmm. And then after a couple of weeks of that, my mom got called into the and I had to go in and the teacher's like, he's, you know, I was, my grades were bad. And my mom's like, so what's the problem? And the, and the teacher's like, well, he's not doing all of his homework. He was. And all of a sudden he's not. And my mom's like, why are you not doing your homework? I'm like, because I don't need to do them all. I obviously know how to do the skill set. And the teacher's like, you did eight out of the hundred. And I said, 
which ones of the eight did I get wrong? And she's like, well, they all right. I'm like, well, there you go. And I mean, this is what a little <laughs> punk I was, you know what I mean? And it was kind of a funny moment because the, the teacher's like, well, that's not how this works, you know? And I, I course corrected or whatever, mm. but I think that was my first, um, exposure to I, rules are made by humans and humans are fallible. And sometimes they have to be challenged. Now, mm. sometimes you shouldn't, sometimes rules and laws are put in place that you, I mean, they're, it's pretty obvious why they're there, but I find myself in a constant space in life where if I can't make sense of the rule, I'm probably not going to follow it. And that's not good. I'm not advocating for this. I'm just saying that's what I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I tend to be more of a rule follower. I think, um, so coming up with some times where I, I didn't follow the rules. I mean, some rules are kind of like unwritten, you know, like, mm -hmm. like do your homework is, is kind of a written rule. Right. But like one thing I can think of was when I was a kid, I went to a, a family reunion in Iowa mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it was, it was my mom's side of the family. And, and there was like one of my cousins was just kind of being a jerk to me, you know, just, just kind of, I don't know, bullying is the right word, but definitely not being cool. Uh, to the point where, and you know me, I'm 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 pretty like able to to be chill and take it until it boils over, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it got to that point. It got to that point. Like he just pressed enough of my buttons that I was like, you know what? Forget this. And for some reason, he had taken his shoes off. And uh, I, you know, maybe on the playground, he was afraid to get sand in his shoes or something. I don't know why his shoes were off. And because we're in a big park, and <laughs> I decided, you know what? I'll get him back. For being mean to me, I took his shoes and I threw them in the toilet. Oh, <laughs> like the jerk. public, like the public restroom toilet at the park, you know. <laughs> well, let's just say uh, that cost a little bit of drama <laughs> at that family. I mean, I was probably I don't know, like seven, eight years old, maybe I don't remember. But uh, I, I guess there should be a, a rule written: you shall not throw your cousin's shoes in the toilet. <laughs> You know, I didn't read any you of those rules. You shall not have to be told. Nobody that. told me that when we showed up that day. But no, I. It was one of those things. I think it's kind of like as you're talking, like, oh, some some things are are like meant to be broken. It was one of those things where it was like, I think it just got to the point to where I felt like I had to stand up for myself and say, yeah, "Of course, taking it," you know. Yeah. And I had to get back in some way. But I do feel terrible now, looking back, just thinking about like how my family then had to deal with their family and being upset with, you know, each other and, and what I, my actions I took. Cause like hmm. it was, it would have been hearsay on, on what they had done to me, but shoes in a toilet's evidence. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so. Yeah. No, I can, I can dig that. And actually I would lock, let's, let's log rather, let's log that story away for another podcast because there's one on the list I added about st standing up for yourself. Uh -oh, like that's a, okay. that, and so it would yeah. be good to dive into the dynamics of that. And, and I think we both have stories, but, but I understand what, what that is. That, what, what a punk. What are you doing? Don't tell me now. What are you doing? What did I tell me? I was, I was so, I can't remember exactly what was said, but it was obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to just like pick up somebody's shoes and throw them in the toilet for no reason. Yeah. You know, like it, whatever was said to me must've been enough because it put me over the edge. Yeah. That'll, so. that'll get you, that'll put you in a bad space. Um, so now my wife is a huge rule follower. Like this is a, a I wouldn't even say a point of contention with us, but, um, there's times where we're, you know, we're, we're out and about or, or whatever. I don't, I don't know. And I'll be like, I'll just park right here and wait for you. And she's like, well, you can't park here. And not that it's a red zone, but it maybe there's like a no parking sign or, or, and, it, but you can just kind of tell like there's, they didn't put the times on this, but it's obvious there's nobody around. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's nobody around, but she won't park there. If it says no parking, I'm like, there's nobody around. There's nobody around. And I'm not even getting out of the car. I'm just going to wait here while you go grab or whatever you're going to do stuff like that. She's a huge rule follower. Well, because she is, I've seen her uh, get burned on some things that are like pretty frustrating. One of them goes back to uh, high school, and you remember how big our campus was in high school. Remember the yeah. remember the portables, right? They were so far away. Yeah, it's so funny. Like a lot of schools have that now, where they 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 ran out of building space, so yeah. they have to put portables like these trailers, yeah, in so that they can make room for more classrooms. Yeah, it's it's um it's elegant education. So we, <laughs> she was, she had, she had to go from one end of the school cause she had a class like in, I mean, just going to say, remember the 100 hall, mm -hmm. I believe it was the 100 hall yeah. front of the school. And then her next class was at the portables, which is a super yeah, far So we're track. talking like Southeast side of the campus all the way to the North West <laughs> yes, side dude, of the campus. It's like ridiculous. If I remember right? the directions, right. But more than that, she was on crutches at the time. Oh my gosh. Right? So here's the deal. We had, um, this will ring a bell for a lot of people, but there's something called sweep to where there's two bells, 
right? There's the warning bell. Well, there's three. There's classes over. And then X amount of time later, I think four minutes later, the warning bell would happen. But basically say you need to be in your classroom in the within the next minute. And then the classroom bell rings a minute later. And if you're not there, you're late. And if you're not there, you're swept. And you're so now they they sweep you and you go into a like it's almost like in school. <laughs> I suspension. forgot that term, man. You're bringing back some memories. Sweep. It's crazy, right? Where, where they come up with that? Yeah, it's crazy. You're, you're swept. Go well, to sweep. Well, it's like they're sweeping the remains of the people. <laughs> the you remains. know, you yeah. didn't make it. We're gonna clean you up. <laughs> it's like a giant push you into <laughs> this <laughs> dustpan. <laughs> yes. All right. That's what it is. <laughs> and you go in there and you sit in a classroom and you just stare at the wall <laughs> until it's over. And mm -hmm. it's just the it's in my opinion. It's pretty stupid, but that's, that's, I understand, I understand the, the premise of it, but in this particular case, she's just hustling on these crutches, just trying to get her across that. And this is my wife. She's been a, a 4.0 student her entire life, you know? And so obviously she's not a problem. And she was like probably maybe 20, 30 seconds late on crutches. And she got and the teacher's like, you got to go to sweep. Wow. And it's like, can you use your head? Like use yeah. your head, use your brain. Like these are the, these are the moments I'm talking about. Uh, in regards to rules, I understand. I understand what rules are. I know why they're put in, in place. But to me, they're a bit of a guideline, and there is a time and a place to enforce them. But there's never a time or place to not use your head. Mm -hmm. And that's a situation where the teacher should have been like, "You don't need to rush next time. Just come on in." Yeah, you know what I mean? Because let's let's look. As her. She's sweat dripping down her face. And, yes, and dude, she's out and of she's breath on and, crutches. Yeah, like, I mean, take take a look for one second. Yeah, come use on. your head. Like that's the type of stuff. So that teacher was a, a, a that teacher was obviously a big time rule follower. It's super frustrating to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you doing? And I had a situation like that where it was my geometry class. I'll never forget this, dude. I was never late to this class ever. And by never, I mean never. I did, I zero percent of the time was I late, and something held me up one day. And I happened to step in the classroom at the same moment that the bell went off. Bing. And she's like, you got to go to sleep. And I was like, I, I, I've never been late. I just, and it, even the class was like, first of all, he's never been late. And his foot was in the door. It's like, yeah, go to sleep. Oh my God. I was like, okay. So I just went home. <laughs> <laughs> I just went home. Okay. I just went home. Yeah. I'm not going to sleep. Yeah. So your wife, <clears throat> we had the tradition and I think, I don't know if this is normal for high schools, but senior ditch day. Yeah. Right? yeah. When you're a senior, there's one designated day that everybody all the seniors are supposed to ditch and go do something so much fun, fun right yeah like go to water park together like every, there would always be like some sort of organized like this is what we're all gonna go do or whatever yeah did your wife ditch did she, she did. go on senior ditch day? she did in fact and i went to hers because she was a year ahead of me and, and <laughs> so <laughs> junior in high school go to senior ditch day okay yeah mr rule follower <laughs> i did i um well when i said <laughs> i that was, was around the time i really stopped caring about rules right mm. But yeah, when I was, she was a senior, I was a junior and on her senior ditch day, I went to hers and we didn't do much. We just put a bunch of friends. I think we yeah. just went to her house and hung out or whatever it was. Yeah. You're definitely going to dominate this podcast because now I'm thinking about it. Like, yeah, you rules weren't a thing for you. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember. So, okay. You're two years ahead of me. Yeah. Right. So in age and in high school, you were a senior. I was a sophomore when we met. Yep. And so I remember, you know, I, I really admired you as I, I was like looking up to you as a leader and everything and and so after marching band season was over the next season was like concert band or whatever mm -hmm. and so there was like a first hour concert band class that uh we were both going to be in together and i was like super excited <laughs> that i was going to be in this this band class with you and uh that was outside of marching so you didn't have to like uh you know keep your distance from me we could have actually hung out and had fun you have to let me explain myself when you're done with your story i will okay okay i'll give you your moment i'll give you a moment but uh i was looking forward to this so much you know you come back from from like the the winter break or whatever and it's time for that new semester to start and i lock in day one i was like oh sweet skiz is gonna be here we're gonna hang out we're gonna become friends where's skiz <clears throat> Bell rings. Where's Skiz? Eh, maybe he's just running late today. He'll be here. <laughs> whole, whole class goes by. No Skiz. It's like, all right, well, maybe whatever. He maybe missed school that day. You know, it could have been sick. Week goes by. Two weeks go by. Still no Skiz <laughs> showing in this class. And I'm like, what is going on? I thought he was in this class. You were in this class. Yeah. You just decided not to come. I just decided not to go. <laughs> I said, well, let me explain myself. Okay, first of all, I feel kind of bad about this because I didn't know that you were looking forward to it. I would have probably not you made any difference. I was yeah. still just a sophomore in your eyes, so. Yeah, but you were still like the coolest dude ever. But anyway, <laughs> so here's the deal, though. So I had enough credits to where I, I could fail a class and I was going to graduate, no problem. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't, this is, I now, so we're clear, I am not advocating for this behavior. This is, this is literally behavior that's stupid, but um, I knew I could fail. I did, I, I knew, I knew I could fail and I would graduate. I knew that. I also wasn't up for any scholarships, even though I, I didn't, I didn't have the education back then to know that early on in my high school career, um, if I kept up what I was doing, I would have gotten scholarships grade wise. I didn't know anything about scholarships. I thought scholarships was like for the captain of the football team and that's it. I didn't know mm -hmm. anything back then. Right. And so I just didn't, I, I got good grades, but I didn't get grades that were scholarship worthy. And by the time I had learned that that was a thing, it was already too late. I'd already done it. So I butchered myself. So that was bad. And so to that end, I was like, well, now this is just a matter of graduating. You know what I mean? This is, and again, I'm not advocating for this. I'm just saying, well, I'm just explaining my thought process. And I did the math. I'm like, okay, so I can actually fail a class and I'm going to fail the class that I care the least about. And here's what's weird about that is that I loved orchestral season, loved it. I love music. I love playing music. It doesn't have to always be on a drum set, hacking mm -hmm. away. I love doing marching band. I loved orchestral music. I, I just, I love music. I love making music, but the program had gone to crap. And it was, we, in the, what was coming out of that band was dookie. And I was like, <laughs> I don't really want to be a part of this anymore. This sucks. You know what I mean? I remember get, having a pretty bad attitude about it. And so I was like, I'm just not going to go. And, and then not to go into too deep, but my life was in a weird spot at that time. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was, there was, there was some darkness, right. And stuff like that. And so I was just, I wasn't like a down in the dumps guy, but I was just like, I'm just going to do what I want right you got now. You a chance to sleep in. You took it. I did. Nothing I did. And I was like, I already know I'm going to be working until 10, 11 at night anyway. So I'm going to, I'm going to sleep in. And so I remember every day and I always set, I had good intentions. I always set my alarm so that I could make class. Uh, it was the first class of the day, if you remember. And so yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would, <laughs> I'd set my alarm and it would go off and I would laugh at it like I'm going to go to that class. And then I would come in and my next class was an English class right after that. It was my only academic class the second half of my senior year. From there, I'd go to gymnastics. From there, I would leave early and have a long lunch. And from there, I'd go to jazz band and then I'd go home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. So Freeze, it was great. Of a, a year. Yeah, it was. Amazing. I can't remember if my schedule was like that senior year. It probably was. I think I went to. I think I went to summer school just so I could get a schedule. That's what I did. Just like that. That's yeah. what I did. I did yeah. it for that. I took government the year before yeah. specifically so I could have. I think that's yeah. exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah. It was the best. It Maybe was, I learned it from you. I was just. Gonna I learned say. it from watching you. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Well, speaking of, uh, so you said okay, you went uh, on your junior year. You went to senior ditch day. That was a thing, right? Like the class levels were a thing and at the at the high school level. And I uh, remember if you were a junior or senior, you were allowed to leave campus for lunch. Yep. If you were a freshman or yeah. sophomore, no good. No good. You're yeah. stuck. You have to either bring your lunch or eat the garbage cafeteria food. <laughs> and uh and I had I had friends that were older, you know, yep. like you and and I had another friend who was one year older than me. And uh when they got a car and their license and everything, they were like, sweet, I'm going to go to lunch. And I'm like, oh, dude, we, we, that lunch is our thing. We hang out all the time at lunch. And he's like, dude, just come. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, but they, aren't they going to like check our IDs at the on the way out? And he's like, don't worry about it, man. We'll just like go as a group and you can kind of like sneak flash your whatever so quick they can't see it or something. And so, yeah, I broke some rules. There I, you go. I, I, I went to plenty of lunches. See, uh, you were when worried. I wasn't supposed to my sophomore year. You were worried you were going to have anything to add. I know. Yeah. See, we get talking, and then all of a sudden the brain starts going. It's yeah. like, like even though even though I was in the shower for like ten minutes this morning, just trying to think of what I could talk about today, and coming up with nothing. As soon as we sit down and start talking, it's like, oh yeah, I did lots of bad things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I don't know if you ever came with me, but I, I know what you're talking about. And there was, we, but the, see, the, the IDs were color coded too. They so were. You had to be kind of yeah, real yeah, swift. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I think that year mine was like a like a copper color, and that it, that was easy to spot. So I'd have to just kind of like pretend I I showed it with a, without really showing it. You know, like cover up the color and only show the pictures. I don't know what I did, but I made it out. I made it out multiple times. Yeah, like they. I guess the the person at the gate probably didn't care. They they probably also thought the rule was stupid, you know. Yeah, and then maybe they that that's that's a possibility, right? And that's just. I mean, I don't. That's a different thing because you're from a legal standpoint. The the school's legally bound to you when you're on campus and they place these. So now if something happened to you, that that you kind of release the school because you weren't supposed to leave, but now that person's probably going to lose their job. Yeah. So that's that that's been a big where deal. I get. Yeah, yeah. It, could, it could, and that's where I'm like, see, I understand why some of those rules are put. In, in fact, I think. Boy, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if, if they can leave at all anymore. Can they? I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't. I don't. At the school my wife teaches at, I don't think they can. They're not allowed to leave at all, even senior year. I don't think so. And wow. I could be wrong about that. But 
I'll tell you what I remember is, so my senior year, we talked about I'd leave gymnastics early and then we, cause we wanted to have a long lunch, but it was mainly like my justification to the teacher was we're going to, we, I don't want to be rushing through this. Like it, like lunch is already like short enough and yeah. it takes forever to get out of the parking lot and people are zipping. It's really dangerous. That's yeah. That's, that's probably why if they did start locking it down altogether, not letting anybody go, it's probably that, that reason Yeah, is just, there's not enough time to race to a fast food place, yeah. get your food, eat your food and then get back yeah. before your next class. Otherwise you are doing exactly that. You're racing your car at lunch every day. It's yeah. scary. I put together a, like a, a pseudo proposal on taking two and a half minutes from each class to add another 15 minutes to lunch um, just to give kids a peace of mind to not have to speed to get back on mm -hmm. time and stuff like that. I did it for a class and the teacher's like, you should, you should pitch this. You wrote this well, like it's a good argument, you know? And it was, I mean, what did I know? I, that happens at the district level. So right. I'm not going to, I actually think it, it might happen at the federal level. I mean, I have no idea. Yeah. But, they may have a required certain amount of, of minutes. Right. Hours, right. Whatever, for and each. it probably does. But in any case, um, so, uh, we would go to lunch and one of the guys in our gymnastics class, such an awesome guy. And he, he, could, <laughs> he couldn't leave campus and he was a senior, but your parents also had to sign off oh. on it. and they would like do like punch your card. Remember oh, that? that? That's what it was. You had a little star punch hole. You had a star punch hole, but I think it was, I think the years Something were like also color coded. I could be remembering that yeah. wrong, but I remember there was a star punch hole, but I thought it was also color coded so they could do it quickly. So the, the years, the color coding was what year you were. The right. punch was, are you allowed are you to leave? Yeah. Cause yeah. the parents have to sign off. Yeah, on you're it. right. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how I went. So his parents, no dice. They're not signing off on it. It was like he a, it was like a religious thing. Yeah. No. No. Oh, so no. he was a rule follower. It was. It was. He. He didn't. We talked. We're like, you just come with us. He's like, oh, my parents is here. And we're like, well, <laughs> we want you. We want to have lunch with you. You know what I mean? And but you do your thing. And, and he's like, I'm going with you guys. But he like, I think he tried it once, and the security's like, no, you know. And so we ended up. It was the same thing every day. We'd drive to the end of the parking lot. He would just jump the fence and hop in. And it was oh my just gosh. Fine. It was fine. It was absolutely fine. He would just hop the fence and pop in and we would have lunch <laughs> and leave. It was great. But and we got to make great memories. But uh but that's you know, that's those are those are piddly little things. And and then there's, you know, what were you thinking? And and here's my buddy and I <laughs> we got a story together that we didn't I don't think we talked about on the we're idiots or whatever. Maybe, maybe we did. Maybe it might be bad enough that we decided not to. Is it breaking the law, breaking the law. I thought we said we weren't going to admit any guilt in breaking laws today, but well, we have some that we should probably not talk about, and they're definitely things that never happened. <laughs> it's not like they're going to come back and prosecute us, you know, no, for something we on. did. You, uh, it's not what, that bad. Twenty you're, years ago, you're making it sound way worse. Than I missed my sunglasses. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Of course about. I do. Did we tell well, that story? Well. We did. We did tell that story. We didn't tell during a podcast. Yes. Okay. Dude, we've done this podcast for over half a year now. I, I can't know. even remember what we've talked about. I know we did see, and I remember lots of it, but there's okay. a part of that story we didn't tell because we're smarter than that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do no, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> passing things to. Hey, outside. you know what I just said? I said things. Yeah, that's right. Things are fine. Just items. Now people are thinking what those things are. Probably my sunglasses. It wasn't your sunglasses. <laughs> you stop it. <laughs> You stop it. Now it does. People don't let your mind run amok. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know the story we're talking about, then then go re-listen to all of our podcasts. Yeah, it's there a good you one. Because we need, we, we need the, the listens and downloads and views and stuff. <laughs> so the <laughs> dynamic that you had to me, I was a senior, you were a sophomore. I had that dynamic with a good buddy of, I, of ours when I was a sophomore and mm -hmm. he's a senior. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And he showed me, uh, we, were, we were in band and he's like, we got, yeah, I'm going to show you something super cool. And uh, we snuck out into the hall and I do not do this. Do not do this. This turned into a weird idiots. Don't do this. But I wonder if I talked about this. Maybe I did. Maybe I don't care if I did. Uh, we had, remember the old gum, you eat gum and you have the metal, the metallic wrapper. Yeah, yeah. So he would fold it up and he'd, and he'd put it in like a shape of a U and he'd stick it into a light socket and then he'd take the other end and almost stick it into the other. And he'd be like, okay, back up. And he'd grab his stick and he would tap it in with the drumstick. And the second he did it, it just goes, it like shoots out. And like all the lights in the building shut off. Oh my god! like the emergency lights come on and then we just run. We just run. What is wrong with you? <laughs> well, that one, that's a rule you should that follow. Was, you shouldn't that, do that. Yeah. Don't, because you could have died from electrocution. Well, yeah. 
But Maybe that's why I shock everything now. Because I oh yeah, <laughs> I seriously. I kept every back. time we go to set up for this podcast, you <laughs> shock the camera and it like shuts off completely. And I'm like, it's never coming back from this. <laughs> the lights would come back within a minute, and it was fine. It wasn't at the, nothing. To worry yeah, about after there. some janitor had to go like well, maybe, flip the breaker. Maybe, uh, maybe it wasn't the whole building. Maybe it was just the hallway. Whatever. We busted a circuit. And who cares? But it was like. It would, we, we popped a circuit and they just had to flip the circuit and it was super funny and it was all for this podcast, yeah. but now <laughs> we, so we knew what we were doing, but I'm fine with that. Like you have to, I mean, that's, don't do what I did. First of all, don't do yeah. that. That's a bad, that one's a bad one. And I got, I got away from not having injury and stuff, but it was super fun. Some rules are there for a reason. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I asked, I, I, when, when we decided to do this topic, I asked my wife, I was like, can you, you know, can you help me on this? Cause I, can you think of any time that, that I like broke a rule or whatever? And she's like, well, you almost did once. <laughs> that was, that was her, her helping me. You almost did once. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you almost ran that red light one time on purpose. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm like, really? What was that about? And then she's like, well, remember when I went into labor at yeah. like 3 AM and, and there was a red light and no cars could be seen. And I was like, so, what I forgot, like I forgot about this, and, and I'm like, so what I do? She's like, you stopped at the light. <laughs> Why my wife is in labor, <laughs> 3 a.m., no cars in sight, and I still stopped at the red light. And I'm like, it, maybe that's one time I probably yeah. could have broken the law and yeah. been okay, but I still stopped at the light at 3 a.m. with my wife and in, in labor. You would have been fine too, because I was back before all the cameras were grabbing you too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and that's yeah, that's um, you should have gone through. And that's, see, there you go. There, there's times and places like, like rules are really guidelines. Like I was saying, they're guidelines and there's a time and a place to, to follow them. And there are, and you really, honestly, for the most part, a lot of the stories I've told you really should. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a story I, I have for you. Uh, this is an interesting one where I, I was a counselor at a music camp and it was my first year being a counselor. So at first I was, a I, I went there as a, mu a, a music, like part of camp. <clears throat> and then the next year I was a counselor and I interviewed for it and they got the gig and I was very excited because this music camp was great. And I was actually up at, at NAU, uh, in Flagstaff and I was very pumped and I enjoyed it. And I, I just took to heart, you know, these, these kids, right. The first two weeks was like grade school through junior high. And then, um, after that was high school kids and, and you had to be, you had to have just graduated or, or, I don't remember. I think I was going to be a senior. I don't, re I don't remember. I think you, I think, yeah, you could do it if you were about to be a senior, but that was like the youngest. And that's what I was going to do. Actually, I know for a fact, that's what it was. I think, I don't know. Anyways, I was young and I, and I was happy to be a counselor. And, uh, one of my kids, I found myself being like, I really like this. I like these kids. I want to do right by them. And one of them started to fall ill. And he said, I can't go to my classes today. And I'm, I threw, I've been throwing up all night. I said, all right, let's, let's get you some food. Let's get, and I check. I'm like, you're, you're a little hot right now. So you're probably, you know, came down with something. So let's keep an eye on you. And then I, I checked on him several times that day and he just wasn't getting better. So they had a medical thing on like there on campus. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of it, but it was like a medical, like educational medical wing or whatever. And it was not well run. I mean, like, I'm just going to say it back then, the incompetence of the, of the people who were there it was terrible I mean, like hmm. as bad as it gets so i was like i didn't know that at the time so i took him and they were like oh he's fine he's a little hot and they sent him home i'm like but it's been several days like uh, uh, you're not supposed to have a fever this long i think it's been like two days and like he's fine i'm like something's wrong he's had like he has actual sharp pains and this like that's not good this is like so you got to do what you got to do or whatever all they did was dismiss him over and over again give him some advil send him on his way and hmm. it started to really frustrate me so I talked to the head head counselors, like these are the people like in their forties and stuff. And, um, I was like something, I got a camper that's something really wrong with them. And this is way back. We didn't have quite the communication channels that we do today. Right. It wasn't like he could text his parents or anything like that. Um, but he called and talked to him and she explained the stuff and they're just, let's see it through. And so I finally said to the head people, I said, I want to take him to the hospital. And they're like, no dice. They're mm. like, you cannot take him off campus. Like if, they, uh, if they, this yeah. is a thing like this, it's a, it's a legality thing. Yeah, right. And, um, they said his parents will have to come down and it was going to be like over a day before his parents could get there. And he was just worsening. I'd get him some food, he'd throw up and all of a sudden, and I didn't know, but I was like this, I don't like this. And so I had had enough. And, uh, after a couple of hours, I'm like, well, I'll probably never get invited back. I don't care. And I just went to his room and I said, pack your crap. And he's like, what's going on? I said, I'm taking you to the hospital. He's like, are you serious? And I said, get, just pack up. We're going to the hospital. 
And I was like, literally, I'm like, I'm going to sneak this kid off of here and I'm going to get reamed. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm like, and I don't care. I was like, this is this hat, this cannot go. This is a time where the rules are literally like you're putting this entire camp at risk. If you take them off campus, this is a, you cannot do this. And I was like, I'm going to, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make sure I tell none of the authorities. I'm not going to tell them I'm doing this because I don't want them and they need to have plausible deniability, whatever, right. I, you know, I mean, what am I going to lose a chance to come back and be a counselor? They're going to lose their jobs. I don't want to do that. So I uh, was just like, pack your crap. Let's go. And so he packed up and he, and he was like kind of nervous. And I said, don't be, this is on me. This is not on you, but I got to get you to a hospital. And I took him to a hospital and the, the, the ride was tough. You know what I mean? He was like clutching his side and, mm-hmm. And uh, right now, everybody listening knows what it is. I didn't have the education back then, but I do. I mean, today I would have been able to point out what this is. And the doctor saw him was like 10 minutes later, like, yeah, he has appendicitis. Yeah, it was about to burst, I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes. And they're yeah, like, he has to go into surgery. So I think he went into surgery like like two hours later. And um, he got it done. His parents were on their way. And uh, it was an interesting moment because uh, when the parents got there, uh, the dad had an interesting like approach on this. He said, did you take him here? I said, I did. He goes, you're not supposed to. I said, no, I'm not. And he backs up his head <laughs> and he's like, well, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Wow. It was one of those things where he was like, not only not mad, he was he like, knew that you put your neck on the line yeah. to save his son. This yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. And I think Crazy. I, I could be wrong here, but I feel like, I feel like the parents went and talked to the program and like, I think so, because then I was asked to come back as a head counselor. Right. Wow. So I, to be <laughs> not, not of their position, but the counselor was in charge of the counselors. Mm-hmm. Right. But by that time I was about to be a dad. I'm like, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. But, um, so I, so then, so that actually makes sense. So I was a counselor the first time after I had graduated. That's right. The summer after I had graduated, because the next summer was when I was about to be a dad. That's what it was. Um, anyways, so my point being that that was a, that's a perfect example of g- rules are guidelines. They're, they're guidelines yeah. and you have to be able to use your head. You know what I mean? That, and, and to this day, I'm like, no, I made the right decision. I made the right he decision did. there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Could have saved his life. Yeah. Yeah. That could have, he could have had it burst and, and yeah, all sorts of bad things. It could, have, it could have been, it could have been bad, man. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. I, I can't think of any like times, honestly, that I, I broke a rule and was like, that, I, that was absolutely the right thing to do. I yeah. just, I, I don't, <laughs> sorry. I don't have any stories. I, I have more stories of me breaking the law. <laughs> If you no. want to hear those, uh, yes. <laughs> All right, I got one that that's fairly harmless. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can water it down. Yeah, right? no, it's yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll omit some of the things. Uh, but <laughs> okay, so you know, I did I did drum corps yes. right at a at a high school at, after high school, and uh, there was a night when you know a couple of the guys that were on the drum line with me, we wanted to get together and and with our drum pads and and like go to the beach and drum on the beach like it was like probably i don't know eight o'clock at night sun had gone down and we just wanted to go sit on the beach and drum and work on you know work on our show and and make sure we were clean and all that and uh so we went to the the beach like and we we couldn't find a spot to like to drum and so we kind of looked around looked around and then we finally like okay over there there looks like a cool spot and so we go and we, we had to like go through some rocky terrain and stuff and then finally found some, a, a place to sit down to drum. And it seemed like we were kind of in the middle of nowhere, you know, and we're drumming away. We're having a, you know, a good time, you know, hanging out. And next, thing you know, there's a helicopter. Oh, my God. <laughs> over top of us, shining its light down and police just like raining in from left and right. And we're like, what is happening? Like, why? Are, what is going on right now? And apparently we were on private property. Oh man. <laughs> apparently like there was a house up the hill and that was their beach, you know? And we were down there like trespassing. And of course the cops like wanted to search all of our bags and make sure we didn't have anything yeah. we weren't supposed to have. Uh, and at the end of the day we, we were let go and, and you know, it was all just a misunderstanding. But like <laughs> at that time that was kind of like when that happened, I was like a helicopter was that really necessary? Yeah. Like, yeah, I got a lot of free time. It was just a couple kids drumming, you know, like when they, when they showed up and they see us just like chilling there with drum pads and drumsticks and, and drumming and, and not doing anything like crazy. They were just like, oh, okay, you guys can go. Like, yeah, yeah. This is no, like no what a big waste deal. of time. What a waste of time. Well, that reminds me. Uh, so back when I used to work at Costco, we decided to have a a bonfire out in the desert, and it just for some re- weird reason there was a spot in the desert that was a giant slab of 
cement. It was like somebody had the idea to build something and they, uh, yeah. their budget was like a hundred dollars and that's as far as they got, <laughs> you know, it was like the weirdest thing. And so we decided we're going to take a bunch of old broken down pallets that were going to be, you know, trash and we'll just, we'll burn those pallets. It was brilliant. And so we brought a bunch of pallets and somebody had a truck, they loaded them up and we went out there. It was probably about 40 or 50 of us just hanging out, having a good time. I don't understand how it happened, but somebody called the cops. Like, I know it's like, what are you doing? Somebody called the cops. Mm. And we, uh, we, we, it was, it was kind of a bummer because we were really in the middle of nowhere. We don't really know how this happened. There was no risk for, so we're clear, even though it was the desert, there's no risk of something spreading for a couple of reasons. One, it was on a big concrete slab. Uh, two, it was nothing but dirt around. It wasn't like there was brush. And three, mm. there was like, it, it wasn't surrounded by a moat, but there was like, it was, there was for some reason, like a Creek going through it. It's I, I couldn't yeah. gun to my head. I would not be able to show you where this was. Cause I, I, I don't know where it was, but it was somewhere weird. And there was like a river running through this part. Uh, <laughs> so the cops show up, but the cops are like on the other side of this river and the river's like patchy. Right. It's kind of weird. It's, it's patchy. And, 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 uh, and I, as for the record, I was legal, but I did, I didn't drive and, but, and I had some drinks, but I, I didn't drive and I was of legal age. So I, I, I mean, arguably I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I did, just, I did, I was very hyper and, um, it was time to put the fire out. Like we, I was, we just conceded. We're like, okay, we'll, we'll put it out and we'll leave. Like we were good. Mm -hmm. We weren't bad. We're like, you know, screw you. That's not what this was. We're like, we'll, we'll put the fire out and we'll go. I'm like, we're, we can't, we got to dump all the fire in the water. You know what I mean? Like we can't have any risk here. Let's do it. So I grabbed a burning pallet burning. And, and it was like part of it. Only half of it was on fire. And I used it as like a push broom. And I just like pushed, like I'd run across this whole thing. And, and there, and there was just like skids, like your sparks are going everywhere. <laughs> so then I decided I'm going to just be amazing here. And I'm going to swing this thing. Uh, like I'm going to do this, like with my whole body and swing and just throw this burning pallet into the water and it's going to be cool. Right. Well, it would have been if I didn't throw it the like wrong two feet, right? No, I threw it the right direction, but I threw it like directly at a cop who was crossing <gasps> the water. Oh no. I had no idea. I had no idea. Now, now gr I'm, I'm very grateful for this. It didn't hit him, but it did hit in front of him and put the fire out, but it splashed. Him. Oh no. <laughs> when I let go of it, I'm all, <gasps> I saw, I saw this dude, and, and it's water and splash of it. Everybody's like, "Well, I guess Skiz is going to jail." And the cops <laughs> like, and the cop even said, "He's like, you trying to go to jail tonight?" I'm like, "I'm not. That was a hundred percent an accident. I'm so sorry. I really, really felt bad." <laughs> and um, we end up uh, coming. It's time to leave, and we're driving. And and my buddy, um, I'm not going to say their names, but my buddy's driving. And he's driving his truck and he's driving and a friend of mine is in the center and then I'm on the right side and he's really, really cooking. And I'm like, dude, you don't need to go this fast. Like we're not in trouble. We're not running from everybody, but he was just like, kind of wanted to get the lead out and we're really, and it's the dead of night and I'm starting to get worried because my brain's like, you're like, remember your trek here. And all of a sudden I realize, dude, there is a 90 degree turn in front of us and we're on dirt and I'm like, you need to slow down. And by the way, it was too late, dude. And, uh -oh. and, and it wasn't just a 90 degree turn. It was, there was a metal barrier and then a fence behind it. And then it was a drop off into oh like, like a bigger water area. And uh, I'm like, you have to slow down. You have to slow down this 90 degree turn. There it is. And then he, I see him just like slam on the brakes and crank the wheel. And it was like, he did nothing. We just, we just kept coasting forward and uh, it got real quiet in the truck. He's all, yeah, we're going to hit. And the second we hit the first barrier, it pulled it up out of the water, went up on the hood. Then we hit the fence and the fence came on top of the truck and we were just like kind of stuck there. And uh, he, he, we, we hit and I'm like, dude, we're fine. We didn't, we didn't go over. We didn't go over, but your truck is messed up, dude. Yeah, that stinks. And it took another truck to pull him back out. And, and, uh, and his axle was completely busted. It was, it was a mess, but in any case, I don't know how we got into that story, but it was That's like, a good story, it right? was, a, it's a good, it's an exciting <laughs> story. You know, <laughs> it's funny. Like you start talking about like cars and I start thinking about, okay, you, you were a little negligent with your car. We told the story, I think, about you like <laughs> driving it into that fence yeah. uh, of that area that used to be where you skateboarded or whatever. <laughs> One of the, that, no, the way I rode the, the bike, our, bi our dirt bikes, yeah, our okay. bicycles. Yeah, 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 yeah your, your dirt bike track, and yeah. they fenced it off. You were mad, and you drove your car into the fence, and that was <laughs> the funniest thing I'd ever seen <laughs> because I'd never seen anybody have such negligence to their car. <laughs> and, uh, but that got me thinking like, okay, so sometimes when it comes to breaking rules, like it's warranted if you're making a joke. 
Yeah. Yeah, because that was that. But there was another time <laughs> that I could think of that was I was kind of dying laughing and almost as bad. They put in one of those like uh circles, the roundabout things. It was a four-way stop sign in my old neighborhood. <laughs> and they <laughs> and they put to get they put one of those like at the four-way stop, they were having problems. Like people were running the stop signs left and right. Right. <laughs> So to to mitigate that, they put this big like circle in the middle of that that intersection that you kind of had to like drive around. You couldn't just go straight, right? Um, and so when they first put that in, I think it kind of ir- well it irritated everyone, but it, I think kind of irritated you. They put that circle in, and it was like the middle of the night. We were out two a.m. probably. I don't know. Probably just got back from Jack in the Box, and uh, <laughs> and so we got to that circle, and I think there was a little grumble like this stupid circle. I can't believe they put this here. And then you drove around it, and instead of turning where you were supposed to turn, you kept going. Yeah. And he went around the whole circle. And I'm like, all right, that was fun. He did a trip around the circle. Now he's going to turn into the neighborhood. <laughs> nope, didn't turn. Went around the circle again. And somehow, I don't know if it's true, but somehow it felt like you kept getting faster and faster <laughs> as you were making more and more you were rotations. Up against the glass. Yeah, I'm like literally. <laughs> It's like uh, it's like that ride at the state fair yes. that that's, goes in circles so fast that you like slide up the back of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was like that was happening, and you just kept going around. I don't know how many rotations you made. <laughs> like I expected to wake up the next day and see tire marks, you know, like you were doing donuts <laughs> around this thing. And I wasn't. It just kept and, going and in I circles. Just, it was just kept getting like every time you didn't turn into the neighborhood, it, just got, it got funnier and funnier. And and I got to a point where I started to make you believe, okay, that's enough and then yeah. i would go again and i was and i kept i think for a while there i was narrating the whole thing like there was a reason oh i gotta go back no i guess we can no i do need, you know i like yeah. i just kept doing it and i think we leave something back there maybe we go back yeah it was <laughs> you're cracking up i was i did feel a little bit bad because there are some like houses really nearby right there and i'm sure that was a bit loud at like 2 a.m or whatever well, i wasn't like 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 screeching Peely my tires. Yeah. There's nothing like I would have lost control if I was doing yeah. that. But. Yeah. No, you're going <laughs> just the perfect speed for it to be funny <laughs> and not dangerous. Yeah. Not really good for But your you did tires. run about 50 stop signs that night. I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, arguably. <laughs> you're supposed to, I don't think you're supposed to just keep going in no. circles. <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. It was, it was super <laughs> fun. That was funny. Yeah. This is, it's funny because I, like I said, my, my wife is a rule follower and I try to, I try to be respectful of it because I, I don't sit there and just look for rules to break. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm not one of those like rules are meant to be broken. That's not that I'm not like that. But when there's rules that I'm like, that's yeah, well, this is yeah. stupid. I'm not doing it. Then I just don't do it. But it makes her uncomfortable. So I try to be respectful of yeah. that. And every once in a while, there's that one time when I'm like, okay, this is what we're doing. And she's like, well, we're not supposed to. And I'm like, it, this is happening. You know what I mean? Like every once in a while, I'm like, this is, this is happening. This is, it, this has to be done. And there's priorities. And uh, gosh, there was a time, this, sound, this is going to sound like not the same thing, but it's sort of is because of her commitment to, to rule following. It's, this is not a rule, but it is in that realm in regards to this is what you're supposed to do. She was cooking and she was making, uh, boy, I don't remember what she was making, but she was using like a, what's that thing? It's like a, you, you put like um, vegetables on it. You slit like a mandolin or something like that. I don't know if yeah, I'm like saying spins that right. Yeah, like spins the water off of them. Is that what you're talking about? No, 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 no. no you like, you like, you put like a, a cucumber on it and you slide it and it may, it takes off like a thin layer of the cucumber. Oh you do yeah. It again, a do it slicer again. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say it's called like a mandolin or something. I'm probably really, really saying it like way wrong. I'm going to look it up later, but uh, that's what she was using. So it's like a, it's like a long white device and there's a blade on it that looks like it's flush with it, but it's not, mm-hmm. it's slightly raised ever so slightly. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's an, you put the cucumber on it and there's this big plastic apparatus. You put in the cucumber and you slide, you slide, you slide and it just makes those it slices. Make me nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, that's where this is going. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Okay. So she was she was cooking something and I was doing I think I was I was working on something. Uh no, I probably wasn't. I was probably sitting there on my big fat butt uh, watching TV or something. And she was doing this and it, the whatever vegetable she was doing at the time had gotten low enough to where she ditched the apparatus and put her hands <laughs> on it. And it was funny. It's the last time I told this story to a buddy of mine, the whole time he kept saying, stop, stop yeah, it. You know? Yeah. There's yeah. lots of people right now that also say yeah. that. Where, what are we doing? And she's good at doing it. Oh, and then, you're going to make me throw up. Yeah. And then it happens, right? Uh, and she hits her finger and um, no. she gives out a cry in pain. And she's like, oh, I got myself. I got myself. And I come over and there's a, there's a decent, there's a good clip of blood. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So now I'm like. Okay, so it's kicks in. We got to put pressure. We're going to elevate it above your heart. Let me get, you know, let's take care of all this because you, you got yourself pretty good there. 
And as she's holding her finger and there's blood everywhere, she's like, hold on, but I need you to get that spice there. And like, she's like keeping she, the, and, I'm, and I, dude, I, I was just like, sit down. Like I have to, enough. to finish the yes, job. It's like, but I was in the process of cooking and this is what I'm doing. This is what has to happen. And I'm like, sit down. Like this has to be done. So like, you know, we did, we had to, she didn't have to get stitches or anything. It was really gross, but she's such a champ too. That it was funny. Cause in that moment she realized how ridiculous she was mean in that moment. Mm. Like it was interesting. Yeah. She, and that, and it was, I know it's not the same, but it almost kind of is, you know? And we were just, we were just, I was just in Florida with her and her parents and, and dude, she like, she married her dad. Like her dad and I get along so well. Cause we are very similar. Mm -hmm. We're really similar, man. Like he's, you know, he's, he's, he's funny, man. You know what I mean? He's a funny dude. And, and, and he's like, he's interesting and stuff like that. And boy, I'm really complimenting myself apparently. <laughs> and I uh, super handsome. No, um, <laughs> we were, uh, he was driving and he, we had to, to get into this parking lot. And the only way to get there was either to turn right and take its big, long detour. Cause there's no left turns there or turn left and drive on the wrong side of the road for a little bit. And, and it was a really little bit. Well, it was so little that, I mean, I would do it and there's mm -hmm. no cars coming. He's going to do it. And as soon as like they saw the signs or whatever it was, his wife, my mother-in-law is all, yeah, he's going to, he's going to break the law right now. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to, and he just <laughs> oh goes and takes care of it. I'm like, yeah, this is why we're so similar, man. All right. I finally <laughs> thought of a, I finally thought of a time that I broke a rule because I thought the rule was stupid. <laughs> finally, it took me this long. Uh, so I got one. I got one. I was working at a at a place and you had worked there for a stint. Uh, and I was like head of the kitchen. We would make pizzas. Oh boy. And I think they were like specifically like branded for uh, Pizza Hut or whatever. Uh, so we would make pizzas for the guests at this place. And there was a rule like if if a pizza was made wrong, right? We put the wrong topping on or whatever, uh, we were supposed to throw it away. Well, the thing was we get hungry back there making pizzas yeah so anytime an order was like sent back like hey they they you put olives on this and they didn't want olives on this or whatever we would we would like kind of store the pizza on top of the pizza oven where like management couldn't see it and then we would like grab a slice and go into the freezer and like eat it you know because yeah. like i don't know about you but for me growing up i was kind of taught to like not waste food yes right yeah, like and, and so the idea of like Throwing away a perfectly good pizza when there's workers that are hungry that they, of course, they wanted us to to pay for pizza on our breaks or whatever because they wanted more money. They were just money hungry. But like the idea that we would just throw away perfectly good pizza when there's people that you could feed here yeah. that would eat it and, be, you know, able to keep working and stuff, uh, we would do it. We would we were like literally hiding from the management like this pizza and the fact that we were eating every once in a while. They're like, what are all these, you know, these crumbs in the, the freezer? You know, they were getting on to us about it, you know, but I, I look at that and I'm like, OK, I feel like that was somewhat valid. I'll, I'll let you judge. I'll let you be the judge and jury on this one. But. Like for me, it was like I couldn't throw away perfectly good food, mm -hmm. and the idea was that we were we were eating while we were working, like so we didn't even take lunches and stuff. Yeah. So we kind of <clears> gave <throat> back that way, like we paid for the pizza by not taking an hour break. Yeah, you know. So I kind of justified it that yeah. way. I I think you're justified, and and more than that, I think the rule's stupid. And now here's the deal, though. I don't think it's because they wanted you to spend money and buying pizza. I think the rules put in place because it was like, well, if they're allowed to eat mistaken pizzas, they're just going to make mistakes right. on pizzas. Yeah. And do this. yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, oh dude, who, dude, who put those olives on exactly. that? You weren't supposed to do that. Wink, wink. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. So I is there you. the potential for that? Of course there is. But yeah. this is one of those. Well, why don't you be a manager? Why don't you pay attention? And if there's a, if there's a mistake a month and even the mistake was on purpose, go ahead and be okay with that. If there's a lot of mistakes, then be a manager and be like, how stupid are you guys? Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, now nobody's going to want to make a ton of mistakes. So they get a ton of free pizza. Just pay attention. Uh, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. I, I'm with you on this. It's like, so there was, uh, boy, I'm a hundred percent in your camp. Uh, when I worked at uh, Costco, we had rotisserie chickens, right? And I don't quote me on any of these numbers. I'm going to, I'm going to try to recall to the best of my ability, but I never worked back in that department. I worked everywhere else. And then one day I happened to be by back by that department uh, while the, while we were closing, we were closed and they were throwing the chickens away, full rotisserie chickens, uh. full rotisserie chickens, obviously not gone bad. They're pulling them off the meat hook, off the hot hook and throwing. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? And they're like, we have to throw these away. And I'm like, you just threw away 15 chickens. And they're like, I know we have to. And I'm just blown away. And I'm like, hold, hold on, hold on. 
And I'm like, so what's the deal? They're like, well, these aren't going to be good for tomorrow. And I was like, so what? You guys need to make less. You know what I mean? Because what, what's going through my head is that's 15 full chickens that were senselessly killed just to be thrown in the garbage. I yeah. can't get on board with that. And right. I'm, I'm fine with, with, you know, meat eating. I'm obviously fine with that. This I'm not okay with. I, I, I'm just like, I'm I really, I'm struggling with this. So I decided... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some math here. I got to figure this out. Cause if it's 15 a night, that's, that's ridiculous. There's a lot of Costco's in the world. You know what I mean? And this is just Costco. Imagine all the different businesses, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm looking at this and I did the math and I think I, 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 I think I was get, able to get it down to, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I was like, Costco kills. It's like senselessly kills and throws away a chicken every 12 and a half seconds. I think that's what I got to. Right. And I, and the numbers could be wrong here. So don't quote me on that. And, uh, I'm, I'm really embarrassed with myself because I didn't, I, I, I I'm sure there's something we could have put together to bring it to a shelter or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. Costco would have needed. And you know what? Chances are, I mean, come on, this is 20 plus years ago. They probably fixed this 15 years ago for yeah. all I know. Right. But this is a situation to where, they had to throw them away. And I was like, why don't you take them home? Or the employees are like, yeah, that's never going to happen. That's like the pizza. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. I'm like, because you're going to cook more chickens. I mean, come on. Like it literally, they literally need to say the employee base. Hey, listen, if you want every single day, we're going to have X amount. Put your name in a hat. If you want to maybe take one home. Imagine like, yeah. It would have been they, easy. Yes. What are we doing? They'd rather throw them away. Yes. So it nobody made me could sick. Have, oh, yeah. yeah. Wasting foods kind of like. Uh, a pet peeve of mine. Uh, I I almost put that topic on our list. Pet peeves. And maybe Wasting we should. Food. It's, maybe we yeah. should. Like like I think I we kind of did this with. Um, come on, man. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I feel like pet peeves in itself is is maybe uh, we could go a different road. So maybe that's a future topic for the podcast. Is pet what, peeves? Oh what are yeah, our yeah, pet yeah. peeves. Oh, that's because good. you know yeah I got a few unique ones I think so I that's think that could be a fun one. topic. You do. I'm gonna yeah. No, I'm with you. And actually, and specifically, specifically wasting meat like that. And I'm not, mm -hmm. it's not like I've never thrown meat before in my life. There's been a time to where we didn't plan well and we had to throw away meat every single time. I'm like, oh, like yeah. I just, I just, it just hurts me to throw away meat. It just does. It mm -hmm. does. I'm not saying it should hurt everybody. It just, I'm saying it hurts me. And, and it just made me feel terrible. But what are you going to do? Here, here's another one. If you like to hear it. We're not getting it. We're not switching into pet peeves, right? We're saving no, that. Okay. We're not. We're talking about another Back time. Back to breaking the. Well, I mentioned cause here. <laughs> no, here's another um, time I broke rules and it was the right thing to do, I think. Um, so when I worked in the tire center at Costco, I, again, I can't say it enough. I, it's like such like dirty work and I just loved it so much. I just did. I like, I just how strong I got and just listening to music all day and, I'd like working with my hands, that whole thing, mm -hmm. right? And um, we were closing up and this uh, car pulls up and there's four people in it who are like really elderly and they've got a flat tire. And there's just four of them and they're all four of them are really old. And they're just, you know, they're like, can you guys, we have a flat tire and we don't have a spare tire. And I'm, and I'm like, okay, and I can, we can get you set. I'm like, we're closing soon, but we'll get you hooked up. And, but they didn't have a membership. Now the rules, big time no, no, mm -hmm. because specifically like working on cars and stuff, there's a certain degree of liability and all that. And you're sending people away and, and on when you put their tire back on, something goes bad. That's very bad. And if they're not a member, that's really bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, we're, you know, we're, we're closing up and they're like, Oh, well we don't have a membership. And so um, I think I, I talked to my manager and he's like, we can't, we can't help them, man. And I'm all, okay, I'll go tell them. So I went out there. I'm all, I'll take care of you. <laughs> Cause I'm not going to, I'm not doing this, man. Yeah. These four sweet elderly people, they, they're, they're, they're not going to be able to, they, what, what are they going to do? What am I going to make them do? So I, I was just like right there. Um, I don't even know if I pulled their car in. I just like jacked it up right there, pull, plucked the tire off and pulled it off and examined it and found the hole and was able to fix it and um, was able to get them patched up and get them put back on there and just made sure that they were hundred percent safe and they appreciate it. And they tried to give me money. I'm like, no, don't worry about that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because then, then I'm like, yeah. I really get in trouble because yeah. you're not supposed to receive you know tips and stuff. So they were very grateful, but I remember being like, yeah, this is just reinforced. There will be times in my life where I'm like, I actually, I'm not really invested in what the rule is. It's cause it's stupid. Mm -hmm. Like there needs to be a time. I, mean, I understand the nature of the rule, but again, it's a dotted line. It's not a solid line. You got to be able to use yeah. your head. Yeah. Maybe don't break the law doing stuff too. <laughs> yeah. 
that might be that might be where you know you know yeah. you go to rest and stuff. yeah yeah don't maybe worry. you know maybe maybe it was right that i didn't run that red light at 3 a.m or whatever when my wife was in labor <laughs> it was probably a cop out of sight you know it would have pulled us over and then she would have gave birth in the car no you, know? you would have gotten an escort to the hospital <laughs> maybe then. yeah, yeah if knows. the cop was using his brain which he would he probably been never like know. oh yeah i got you follow me you know yeah, never know yeah you never know <laughs> but like you 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 had you could have you could have made sure that you were safe and you could have proceeded and it would have been the right decision in my opinion it's my opinion but yeah. there's a time and a place yep that's it that's that's what we were getting at today i guess time and a place <laughs> it's a time and a, place. a time and a place to break the rules yeah, that, that, there's use just, use your head use your head don't use get your, arrested I've, I've broken plenty of rules i should I've not have done broken. i get that yeah there's there's some stuff i couldn't even talk about today <laughs> don't <'cause> you <laughs> You shush over there. I've never broken the law except that trespassing thing I admitted to. <laughs> oh, that was boy. stupid. We didn't I know. got stories on you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shut up. My parents watch this. I, that's why I don't say this stuff. <laughs> uh, no, he's an angel. He's perfect. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's it. So I, I want to um, I want to remind everybody that we, we really are planning on having Tango in the next mm -hmm. one. Uh, we've got to get that scheduled and get that organized and do that whole thing. It's going to be great. I'm I'm pumped. I'm excited to have them. In fact, we can talk a little bit about uh, this comes out. Wait, hold on. Oh, last week. A new series came out. Mm -hmm. Right. Like talking about naked. And scared. No, I'm not talking about. Something oh, that oh god, we don't have to be cryptic yeah, about this time timing of these, yeah. Limited are weird. life, we're not yeah. supposed to be saying that hey. in front of cameras right now, but we can because this doesn't come out until the week after the first. Except I accidentally hit stream instead of record, so you did watching not us live right now. No, yeah. I'm just kidding, no, yeah. <laughs> we we do worry about that every single time for some reason. The software we use to to make these videos, the, the streaming button is directly next to the record yeah. button, it takes like one pixel, yes, to, to do the wrong thing. So. It's the same thing with files, you. <laughs> You can either rename the file or move a pixel and delete the file. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So that's, so that's, we can talk, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that when Tango's oh, here yeah, too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we partnered up. I mean, this is all stuff they're going to know already if they're watching the series. And for some reason, because it's not public yet. It feels weird. For us. But yeah. by the time this comes out, you keep saying stuff. I'm like, shh. I know. <laughs> Stop it, dude. You're giving me anxiety. <laughs> it feels weird. But this doesn't come out for yeah, a while. Limited life is underway and we're having a good time. Having and uh, time. yeah, Tango should have a lot to say on this subject. So yeah. that'll be cool. Yeah, we can talk about that a bit. I'm pumped. I'm yeah. excited to have them. Yeah, me too. That'd be great. Our first guest. I can't wait to see what kind of technical challenges that leads oh to. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> that's kind of my department. That is. Yeah. And I'll be in California. So if you can get that wrapped up, All right, I'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, man. Another good one. Yeah. Fun hanging out on a Tuesday for once. I appreciate you making um, the adjustments for this. Yeah. And I, I, I'm sorry that I, I, I planned so poorly and I, I lost track of my yeah, schedules. Well, don't sweat it, man. This is uh, uh, this goes back to our resilience podcast. Stuff came up and uh, we got resilient about it and figured it out. Yeah, we so. did. And and you were you were you were you don't like. Hold on. It's, not that, it's not that you don't like to be flexible. It's that you prefer not to. And I don't like surprises. I don't you don't like, like surprises. I woke up with a specific schedule for today, and you just threw a wrench in it. I know. I, well, it's worse <laughs> than that. You, we, you have a schedule for your life. I threw a wrench in that. And yeah. then on the day that you changed, I showed up here. I'm like, oh, it's going to change again. And this yeah. new dude. Anyways, you've been great. So thank Thanks. you. I appreciate <laughs> you. All right. Another fun one. Thanks, everybody, for watching, downloading all the things you do. And we'll see you next time. See you guys.